So what actually is a desert? It generally has nothing to do with miles and miles of sand dunes. Instead, it's purely defined by the amount of rainfall that an area gets. This means that regions of Antarctica, as well as those of Africa, are deserts, as long as they get less than 10 inches or 25 centimetres of rain per year. Now, deserts can be formed on every continent. And they vary in size quite significantly, from some of the largest being Antarctica, Sahara and Gobi, to the somewhat smaller Sonoran Desert. Only about 20% of the deserts are sandy. The rest can be rocky, strewn with pebbles or covered in ice, or even a mixture of these surfaces. When you add up the deserts, they represent about a third of all the land area on the planet. They are a very important part of our planet. So that brings us to the question, how are they formed? Why is it that these areas don't get the rain that other places get? It isn't always that these areas are great distances from the coast, but the greater distance the moist air from over the oceans has to travel, the less likely it is still to retain that moisture. Instead, it's more down to the prevailing wind direction, terrain and dust particles. Taking the Sahara as an example, the prevailing winds from the Mediterranean blow east across North Africa rather than moving inland. The wind actually blows from the Sahara and goes southeast onto the Atlantic. The source of that air actually comes from Saudi Arabia across the Arabian Desert. So the air blowing across the Sahara has very little moisture in it. And going further south, currently the winds circle around Antarctica in an almost continuous loop. However, when Antarctica was actually joined to Australia, the wind patterns were radically different, meaning that Australia was both cool and wet, it was covered in forests and even had a huge inland sea, which is now the foundation of the Great Artesian Basin, a huge store of underground water that many people of Australia now rely on and use as their major source of water. So if the wind directions change, so will the land underneath. Next comes terrain or topography. Just because wet air is blowing across a piece of land doesn't mean that you're going to get substantial amounts of rain. Generally the air needs to be forced upwards by hills or mountains. Now if the wind direction is constant for long parts of the year and they hit a range of mountains, you could get a monsoon season. This also can create a dry area in the shadow of this where the moist air has released all of the available rain and in turn that shadow area can turn into a desert. And the oddest part of these three things is dust. Tiny dust particles called condensation nuclei are essential in turning the moisture in air into rain bearing clouds and giving the water something actually to form around. Whilst these can be pollen or volcanic dust or lo lots of other things, a significant amount of it is dust from deserts blown into the atmosphere during a sandstorm and carried vast distances. So areas of the world depend upon deserts for their rain. All in all, deserts are far more interesting and varied than just being vast areas of sand. They have huge impacts on the rest of the world. Deserts, more interesting than you might think.